Digitized by Photovicons. Weddings Event Commission. of early Britons, and which later, for several centuries, no more than appendix to medieval abbey, Gilmer Street Station. A decoder probably had taken off from the old Glasgow airport at Renfrew. Paisley's Harbour has a depth of over 11 feet at neap tides and 7 feet at spring tides. Paisley Cross has not only seen tram cars, the Baileys dealt out justice with impartial hand. When the lash was ordered, the strokes, which might have been as many as 25, were administered in three doses at the cross. In the 18th century, until well into the 19th, the entire water supply of Paisley still came from the cart and from numerous streams and wells in the town. Most dangerous sources, since the river and the burns ran through cultivated and manured fields. Whilst most of the wells were liable to be polluted with surface water, it was not until 1838 that the town's first reservoir at Stainley began to supply filtered water distributed through iron pipes to hydrants in the streets. The harbour. There were two shipbuilding firms in the town, one of them Fleming and Ferguson Limited, specialised in dredging vessels of various types, but during the Second World War showed brilliant enterprise by devoting its energies and its plant to the needs of the Royal Navy, providing 11 corvettes, five frigates, four trawlers, one minesweeper, and seven ocean-going tugs, each of which, which of them complete with machinery, anti-submarine devices, and radar. At the same time, the firm installed machinery in 189 tank landing vessels and converted ships of many different kinds for war purposes. As if that were not enough, they built for the Ministry of Transport four crane steamers which were used at the landings on the Normandy beachheads, one bucket dredger, three hopper barges, two rescue vessels and two ocean-going tugs. Their last order, which I remember, was for a foreign government, two of the largest ves vessels ever launched in the cart, each of them over 300 feet in length and of 2,500 tons gross. After that came closure. The other shipyard was Millen Brothers. Frequent visitors to Paisley would stare in amazement on seeing the bows or the stern of a sizable ship soaring above the wall of what looked like an ordinary engineering yard. Messrs. Millen specialized in river and lake steamers for foreign and colonial countries. The vessels were built in sections which were taken apart and shipped in crates to their destination. How I remember the closure of Fleming and Ferguson so well, it was I who supplied them with, for many years with their national insurance stamps, along with many other industries in, the, in and around Paisley from Wellmeather Street Post Office. Another interesting story is, in 1807, the making of the first section of waterway from Glasgow to Paisley and Johnson. The Paisley to Johnson section was opened on November the 6th, 1810. Four days later, on Martinmas Fair Saturday, a public holiday in the town, occurred the canal disaster. At little after midday, a flyboat, the Countess of Eglinton, drew into the wharf at Paisley. She was crammed with holiday makers from Johnston, and as they were making their way ashore, another crowd began to scramble on board. Under their weight, the boat tilted alarmingly. Immediately was, there was a panicky rush to the other side of the vessel, and she heeled right over. Of her hapless passengers, 87 were drowned.
a view looking towards Babcock's and the old Glasgow airport in Renfrew, where a vast housing estate now stand and most of the streets and avenue are associated with the airport. The Abbey Church, in its original form, as designed in the 12th century and completed in the 13th, differed considerably from the church of today. On the 25th of May, 1891, the cart was declared open to ocean-going vessels, and its future looked bright. During the next 40 years, little was done for the river. Then suddenly the council became interested once more. Systematic dredging was begun and continued. Modern gear was installed on the quays, and a harbour master was appointed. During the years 1939 to 1945, the Cart and Paisley Harbour were busy with ships of every sort, belonging to both the Royal, Royal and the Merchant Navies, ships comparatively small in size but immensely important as units in Britain's fleet. Renfrew Bridge opening to allow ships to proceed to the open waters of the Clyde. With Scotland's supreme poet, Paisley has only the most slender connection. His solitary mention of the town in his indirect one in Tam O'Shanter, the allusion to the young witch's cutty sark a harm, Paisley harm, a single night spent in the house of Alexander pa Patterson, was his only known visit to the town. His statue is here in Fountain Square in Love Street. Church Hill, and there, the High Church. Stony Bray, looking down towards Well Meadow Street. A view of industrial Paisley with its many tall chimneys. One of the many farms around Paisley that would use the Story Street cattle market. What was Paisley like in those early days? The boroughs of Scotland lived scrupulously up to the ancient motto that the Clartier the Cozier. Much as we might think otherwise, we are forced to admit that whatever may have been their character for goodly godliness, our ancestors gave little thought to its companion virtue. They were not clean, the only comfort we can f may, may find in face of this deplorable truth is the fact that neither were their neighbours across the border. It was an age of dirt. Streets in medieval Scottish towns were narrow and unpaved. In summer they had surfaces of dust, in winter filthy mud. Behind some houses were middens. But for the most part, the citizens found it easier to deposit this household refuse and rubbish in the street. The chamber pots were emptied there too. When the women couldn't be bothered to walk so far, more commonly their contents were thrown out of the windows. Men as scavengers had not yet been known of. Only when neighboring farmers had need for manure and the means of transporting it to the fields was any muck removed from the streets. On the 1st of September, 1874, was issued the first num number of the town's first daily newspaper, the Paisley Express, which is still the most popular medium of local news in the borough. The Gazette, catering mainly for the county, 
Another daily, the Paisley Telegraph, was started in 1880, but continued for only a few months. This is a fair at Hawkhead. Railway trucks can be seen on the left. While this railway line vanished in the late in the late 50s, it has now been re-established with a station at Hawkhead by the Strathclyde region. In the 17th century, Paisley, the great event of the year, then as now was the fair. It did not take the form, however, of a mass emigration in which half the Townsfolk or more were dispersed for a fortnight over the length and breadth of Britain. Content with single amusements and with the few facilities for travelling, our forebears were fully satisfied with the enjoyment their own town could provide for them. St. James Fair, it was called, it was held on the second Thursday of August and had its main event a famous horse market to which animals came from all parts of the surrounding shires. Cows were sold also and pigs, sheep as well. But the horses were the central figures. Originally held each year on land at Green Hill, it was moved in 1658 to the causey betwixt the loans, now St. James Street. There it continued, though sadly shrunken towards the end until the early years of the present century. Another great day saw the race for Paisley's famous silver bells, first competed for in the year 1620. Although made at, at the order of the council some years before, the bells are the oldest surviving racing trophy in Britain. The regulations for the first race are recorded in the minutes of the town council. The starting place was to be at St. Cumble's Stone at, in Shinnin and the course was from there to be Cossyside at Renfrew, thence along the King's Highway to the War Nuke of Paisley. The winner uh, was to have the silver bells for a year and was also to take all the gold that shall be given in the race. After deducting a double angel, which the owner of the second horse was to have a consolation prize, and another double angel for the first past the, the, for, 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 past the post at Renfrew. Barshaw Park model boating. Paisley Museum. For several years, Paisley was the main centre for the weaving of silk in Britain, and by 1812 it had entirely deserted Paisley. It was replaced for a while by cotton weaving. Early in the 19th century began the era of the Paisley Shore. The thread mill built at Fergusley by James Coates in 1826 has long since been demolished. About 1840, there were no fewer than 45 separate firms engaged in the pro pro production of thread in Paisley. The museum contains quite a history of the past. Regards entertainment, the Paisley Theatre was built in 1890 on the corner of Smith Hill Street. A spectacle more popular than anything to be seen 
in, the, in a playhouse was still occasionally presented to the citizens of Paisley in the early decades of the 19th century, the public execution of criminals condemned to death. It was not always murder, that was their crime. In 1829, two men were found guilty of housebreaking and assault and were sentenced to be hanged in County Square. They had entered the house of a bleacher at Fox Bar, tied up his sister, beaten himself with a stick and had made off with some silver spoons, a cheque and about 12 shillings in money. The last public execution in Paisley was on 18th of October, 1837. Let that's the last of the Paisley Pirates ice hockey village of early Britons, and which later, for several centuries, no more than appendix to medieval abbey. Gilmer Street Station.